this video will walk you through how I set up the texture palette for Blendfest animations and why it's so helpful to have this tool for your next project. When you take a closer look at the Blendfest animation, you can notice that there's three main styles that are applied to these blocks. The first style is just an outline. And that one's pretty simple, it doesn't need any textures and effects. The second style is these filled blocks that have a very subtle wood grain texture to them and also some effects like a drop shadow and a beveled edge. And the third style is that same block but then with a heavier wood grain texture uh, that is actually made by B. Grandinetti. You should check out her work by the way. So those are the three styles that are in this animation and I'll show you how to set up a texture palette so that you can apply those three styles really quickly or any style that you're working on currently in your animation. So if I want that second style because the first style is just a line uh, I can just click on this texture and you can see now that this object has a very subtle wood grain texture to it and then I can also click on this button for the effects that will make it look like this object is more 3D. Now for the third style, I can just select this object, apply that same texture, but also apply the texture that's a little more heavy wood grain, and then also apply those effects to make it stand out. Now using this texture palette, I was able to get to these styles super quickly. Now that's not only handy when I'm working on a project myself and I just don't want to think about setting up textures, it's also very handy if you're collaborating with other people. Because this animation, for example, I mean, it would be crazy to attempt this on your own. We actually collaborated with a group of people that each individually animated one of these characters. Now, in order to make all these characters look the same and have the same shadow and have the same bevel and have the same textures applied, it can be very handy to have something like a texture palette that they can just use to apply those textures with. And when all those objects come together, it all looks the same in the end. Now, Ray Dynamic Texture wasn't actually finished when we created this animation and that's why you can see that in some of these objects, the textures look slightly different, like this texture looks slightly different from this texture. Uh, so that's kind of the result that you could end up with if you don't have something like Ray Dynamic Texture to harmonize all the settings that you're using on a project. But for future videos, like the Blendfest speaker announcements, I've gone ahead and set up this texture palette. So now I can just use this and get to those styles really quickly. And I'll show you how I set this up. All right, from the start, the first thing that we need are those two texture files. So I'm gonna import them here. This is the subtle wood grain texture, and this is the texture that B made. And I'm gonna hit enter to import those. And they're already selected, so I'm gonna click on plus to create a texture palette. I'm gonna call that blend fest. And that will create a new composition for me that is going to be my texture palette and import these two textures. So I'm gonna call this uh, wood normal and I'm gonna call this uh, wood special. So let's focus on the first one. And in order to see the effect that the texture has, I need a quick object. So let's create a circle. But instead of using this, I'm gonna use the new version of Ouroboros that's gonna come out soon. And if you look at the top of the script, you can see a couple buttons that you can use to create shapes with. So when I click on this, I can set the size to 300, hit enter, and it will give me a circle of 300 pixels. And then I'm gonna use Radium Color to flip the fill and the stroke and then quickly color it. Now that I have an object here, I actually don't want it to show up in my texture palette. So I'm gonna make a guide layer out of this and that will hide it. So if I refresh this now, you can see it's gone. All right, so I think for this texture, the blending mode overlay is gonna work really well. So that's our first texture. Let's take a look at the second texture. So this texture is a little bit big compared to the other one. So what I wanna do is scale it down a little bit maybe to like 20%. And then I wanna set a keyframe so that this texture will always come in at 20% whenever I apply it. Let's see, let's try a multiply as blending mode. You can see that the texture looks a little bit strong. So maybe like I can turn down the opacity a bit, but that still kind of gives me this kind of gray texture. And what I really like is that the texture would darken the color that's below it. And in order to do that, Something like overlay would be the best blending mode to use. 
So if I increase the opacity, you could see that wherever those black lines are, you can see that they're a little darker. It looks a little nicer, but the only thing that's in the way now is this white, so we have to get rid of that first. Now there's actually a really nice effect that you should have, and it's called Unmult. And you can download it for free from redgiant.com. And if you apply that, it will actually take out all the black pixels in your texture. Now we obviously need to get rid of the white, so what we need to do first is invert this image. So I'm going to take the invert effect and drag it before it. And now you can see that it got rid of the white. But now it made the wood grain lines white, so we need another invert effect and apply that afterwards. And now you can see we're just left with those wood grain lines. And it's still a little heavy, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit, like 60, and then set a keyframe so that it comes in at 60 whenever I apply it. Now this is great, but how would this look applied to the other colors? Now a quick way to test that is to just take the Radon in a color palette and drag it below that. And when we scale it down a little bit, and now you can get a good sense of how this texture will look when it's applied to different colored objects. And you can see that it stays quite consistent, so I think this works great. Okay, so now that we have our textures ready, let's create those effects that make the object look a little bit more 3D. So for that, I'm gonna create a adjustment layer and call that depth. And then over here, I'm gonna search for uh, a bevel. Apply that. And then I also need a drop shadow, like this. Let's increase the softness a bit and then the distance. Let's lower the opacity. It still looks a little bit too perfect for something that would be made out of wood. So what I'm gonna do is add a rough and edges. Then I'm gonna lower the border, lower the scale. And now you can see that the edge looks more like a piece of wood. Um, the only thing that's messed up is the shadow, so we need to copy this before the shadow happens, like this. Great, and then let's move this layer underneath the texture so it doesn't affect the textures itself. All right, so now we have our effect and two textures. And if you take that for a spin, you can figure out if that works or not. So that's the wood normal texture, and I can also apply those effects. Oh, and then also notice that if you apply the effects first and then the texture, the texture is going to be on the effects. So you want to apply your textures first and then your effects. Uh, if you want to fix this, you can just turn off the effects for this layer or you can just delete all the effects with Command Shift E. Now, obviously, I can spend more time in this palette and make it all look nice. Uh, just as I did with this palette that I'll share on my website as well. Now for some of the geeks out there, there's an extra button that comes with this palette and that's a long shadow for shape layers. Uh, the way you apply it to an object is you click on an object and then you want to clone it. And then instead of calling it a clone, you call it shadow. And then you apply the long shadow. And then uh, you drag that underneath the object. And then I found that overlay works really nice too because it just darkens that color again. And then now you can just drag this object uh, and the shadow will follow. Now there's a couple controls in here. If you open it up, uh, you can find these three control switches. If you want to get rid of the rest, you can hold down Alt and Shift and then click on these to hide them. And now you're left with just the controls. If you want to make sure that this shows up again when you open the layer, just hold shift and you click on this and then when you open this layer again, those same controls appear again. Now there's currently expressions in here that refer to the long shadow in the palette that acts as a master control. But you can also get rid of these expressions if you hold that same shortcut like alt shift and then click on the stopwatch. And you can do that for all three. And now you can control the angle, you can control the distance, and stuff like that. So I'll put this texture palette up for download and then you can dig around in this yourself and try to figure out how it's done. I hope that gave you an idea on how using texture palettes can be helpful on your own projects. If you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with the upcoming videos. Take care.